which deals specifically with issues to do with the children's matters. We also have a victim and witness support unit within our office. We also have, um, and we are continuing to do uh, this, uh, putting up children-friendly pre-trial rooms in our courts. If you go to the Nonoka here, you'll be able to see a few things. Child-friendly dogs, and that um, of that also ensure that children are well taken care of. As a judiciary, there also been a very, very intentional approach uh, toward uh, uh, dealing with children matters, where we have a maximum or quite a good. Uh, as well as you know, cultures that are in, in, in encouraging the engagement of children in some of these um, activities. And so, as a region, we're not in a good place. This is the reason why we are trying to improve our sensitization to ensure that both the children and the adults are aware of the implications of this issue. That is one. And two, we're also trying to sensitize and to empower, to strengthen the criminal justice system to ensure that the actors are also responsive to the problem as it is showing itself um, out here. What we need to do will be reflected in the decisions that we'll eventually make. Because what we are saying is, is that we are only as good as the fire that is brought to us. A prosecutor is only as good as the fire that is brought before him or her. So the fruits of what you are going to be discussing here will find their way into some prosecutor's desk because we are, we are here to also come out here, um, see the opportunity to, to, to engage in sexual activity, sometimes with children, as one of the attractions. And so in addition to coming to, to, to see this country, you find there's a lot of people who have also come and find it an opportunity to exploit you know, a child or two um, sexually as a result of their visit. And these are some of the issues that we are trying to see how we can stem. But in 19, when we did the assessment prior to our coming here, we identified that over 20,000 children are participating in child sex trafficking. And this is this balance from issues to do with um, child prostitution, children out of the streets, uh, you know, soliciting as, as, as sex workers. Um, uh, which uh, Madam Chuku, Honorable uh, Chuku here is representing them. We are all aware of how COVID-19 pandemic has affected each and every sphere of our life. It's worth noting that during this period, the amount of children or the number of children that were exposed to abuse was so high. In fact, we've seen in the newspapers the number of children that became pregnant during this particular time working in very challenging and sometimes very hostile environments uh, to be able to protect the children. I just want to mention some of the uh, key partners that we have worked with and who have just gone out of the way to see that children are being protected. We have the Beacon of Hope, I don't know whether they are presented here, the, the Beacon Teachers. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the work that you do. We have Child Protection Committees and the representation from them will be still on the way. We have child protection centers, we have got shelters uh, that host and give refuge to these children. Uh, it's no longer an issue, but we end that particular problem. At IGM, we believe in partnerships. Through our casework, our community dialogue, 